What's up, you guys? This is It's Real with Jordan and Demi. How are you doing, Jordan? I'm good, Demi. How are you? Jordan is in LA. I am in New York. And today we have a super cool guest. Okay. We've had Current Joys on before, but today we have Surf Curse. We have Nick and Jacob, who are homies since age 13. And now they have one of the coolest projects that is popping off right now. So let's welcome Surf Curse. Hi. What's Woo! going on? Hi. <laughs> So you guys are in different parts of the world, right? Or different? Yeah, about as far as we can get from each other. I'm in <laughs> Berlin. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in Los Germany. Angeles, right, right under your 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 place, Jordan. Yeah, you're right, right beneath me, <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> That's why you might hear an echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, you've been you've been canning peaches all morning, so. <laughs> down in the cellar yeah so do you guys miss each other that's the big question <laughs> you guys miss each other yeah i yeah, do miss nick we haven't we haven't seen each other well we saw each other at the music video shoot but that was that was really about it yeah what music video nick, shoot? nick was nick uh nick just got off of uh an american tour and I was like, "What's up, dude?" He's like, "I just want to, I just want to play Elden Ring." Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, that. "Hell yeah!" And we end up doing a music video, and then he's like, "I'm gonna go," and then I didn't see him after that. I just played a bunch of. I just played more Elden Ring. I think what we really want to know about the two of you is how we collaborate with one another, and what is it really like, in both of your own words, working with the other person. Jacob? <laughs> uh, originally, the way that we would bring, we would just bring songs to each other and be like, hey, I, I, I have this idea. And then we would sit down and, and work with it. But um, and that, that's that's usually what we did for a while. And um, it's still, it's still kind of how we do it, but we have two more members who worked on this, uh, this new record. And... Um, it, it kind of became a very collaborative thing. We, we could expand a little bit more on what we wanted to do. Before, when we were younger, when we, we would, you know, do these songs, it would just be guitar and drums, and then maybe a lead line, and we'd have a loop pedal and use that live. And, and now it's like, okay, we got, like, two incredible musicians to kind of help expand and flesh out things. So it's, it's now more of a collaborative ever between me, Nick, our our buddies, Noah Cole and Henry Dillon. And uh, it's it's all made out of love. <laughs> yeah, we, we sat, we locked ourselves in a room of love for like a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just, just um, like Jacob would bring songs to the table and I would bring songs to the table and then we would just create like these crazy collages of, of rock music and like add really different dimensions to the songs that we've never had before, like guitar solos and like very complicated chord structures. And so, um, it's it's definitely evolved a lot from when we first started the project, like in our basement, like ten years ago. Who mixes the songs, and like who in the in the team, in the Surf Curse crew, is like the problem person with mixing? Like that needs to be lower. This needs to be higher. Oh my god, the EQ in there. Like, <laughs> well, we're <laughs> we're figuring that out right now. <laughs> um. Yeah, because we're we're still mixing this record. We actually have a new song coming out tomorrow, but it's the only song on the record that's actually mixed. And we have our producer Chris Cody, who is a genius, who's mixing everything. But we've never had like uh, the last time we mixed a record, um, it was with uh, Jarvis Tavernier and and me and Jacob just sort of laid on the floor of his room well, while he was mixing stuff and, and we would just like yell mixing notes like it was kind of the craziest thing like 
we would be like, just turn this thing up, and then he would do it. it I, I don't think anyone does it that way. Um, yeah, we but... just we just hovered around him. <laughs> There's also like our first time, like like really paying attention to some sort of mixing detail. We just like being around him. We probably do the yeah. same thing if we had the free time. We probably just hover around Chris Cody too. Yeah, <laughs> we, we're trying to figure out. Floor. We're we're trying to figure out how to mix a record. We're we're now a, a global operation. That I'm I'm traveling the world and trying to mix this thing, and then, um, so it's been we we don't really know an answer for that yet. <laughs> yeah, what? How has things changed since you guys are now with a major label? I mean, there, do you feel? I obviously you have more time, more resources. But how has it changed the creation of the songs? Um, the major label, I mean, really just uh, gave us like, yeah, resources, like more more money to record and like go to cool places and um, maybe a bit more like clout. So so different different like producers would like to work with us because it's like, oh, this is a this is part of like a major label thing. But I don't I don't really know. Other than that, it's weird because like I think there's like this. Oh, since we're signed to like a major label, like now we have to like write pop songs or something like that. But I think always the the general idea of writing is just to always write a pop song. Like we we always have the intention of writing some sort of like earworm or something that's going to be like good for the live audience like whenever we think about songwriting or especially for me is like oh what is going to make people move you know what can i what can i make that's going to get the crowd going and what could be something that's going to stick with them for the rest of the night or maybe the week or like they just come back to for like the rest of their life or the and rest like, of their and life that's like that's never changed say. even before and after uh you know that oh i thought there was more to that i thought yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I feel like I've heard that about like a band like Nirvana, who um, like most people wouldn't consider that pop, but it is, it is a pop structured music. And he probably was just every single time trying to make the, the coolest song or the greatest song or the most like, you know, memorable, whatever melodies that he could, that he came up with, whatever. One thing that is really funny is like we gave the label the demos and... Uh, <laughs> And then like we went into the studio and there's this one song where we're like, okay, we should make this like the pop song. Like this is the radio song and we're gonna make it like this certain way. And when we when we sent it to them, they're like, what is this? Like, <laughs> they're, like what the, they're like, what the fuck is this? Like, it should be more like you guys. And so then we had to go back and record it like us. Um, so I guess that's like a weird, I guess you don't really hear that very often. Which you is play head games with yourself. Like you thought because you're on a major we label. We thought that's what they wanted. Radio friendly. And then, yeah. Yeah. But they wanted the, the, the punk rock um, elements. Well, you, back you're, it, so. you're, 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 I mean, you, you kind of rode this wave from the burst of, from the popularity of freaks and, you know, and that song, they want more of that, I'm assuming, you know, because that's the song that everyone and that's I think the, the kind of the blessing and curse of of TikTok and stuff going viral on on you know an app is or a social media platform is that you have this double-edged sword of it's you know kind of out of your control, but at the same time you know, Freaks wasn't made for top 40 radio, but yet it was still popular. And so it shows that your type of music has a big audience, whether you mess with it or not, you know? Hopefully, we'll see. That's the fun thing about TikTok is you, 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 you like you said, we're just riding that wave of uh, whatever the heck that is, you know? Um, you have a TikTok? I don't. Jacob, you have a do you have a TikTok? Are they making just, you yeah, make a TikTok? I occasionally post on there. I, I I just go on there and scroll and see what's up. Um 
I just like animal videos for the most part. The thing about TikTok is just like, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> I don't understand it. You, and Instagram is very simply just upload a picture. That's it. Yeah. What are yeah. all these extra steps? That's, well, you that's, gotta you gotta put a you gotta put like a caption, and you need to pick a song, and you need to learn a dance, <laughs> and or you just need to be like really good at cooking, and or have some or dancing and cooking at the same skill. time, what? and then you make a video about like how to make a bird house, how to make a bird way. house. You know, there's just so many things. No, but going back to Freaks really quick, like, what is it about that song that you think people attach to so much? Um, the, <laughs> the, um, the uh, sense of loneliness and alienation and also the catchy riff. Yeah. <laughs> if you can make someone dance and kind of make them cry at the same time, then that's... Yeah, it's a combination of of uh, beats per minute and and sad lyrics, and that is a, that is a formula right into someone's soul. Since you guys aren't on TikTok really to uh, to the extent that a lot of people are, when did you first notice the virality of freaks and when it was taking off? Was did someone notify you, or how did you even know it was happening? We sort of missed an email. <laughs> yeah, we missed a few emails about it that were, yeah. like, that were like, this is this is really popping off. And we were like, okay. And then they're like, no, like really it's it's getting crazy. And then we were like, okay. And then like Atlantic emailed us and they were like, we want to sign you guys. And we we're like, mm, okay. Um, <laughs> but we just didn't reply to any of these emails. And then our manager was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, send me You're these emails. Cool. You're like, being coy. Yeah, well, I just did, it just wasn't very real to me because I, I couldn't see, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's happening in such a different sphere of, of existence, the, the like TikTok world, which I'm not even on or have. So it's like my understanding of it was very elementary until until it like started changing our lives in a lot of ways so um that's very interesting yeah so we missed some emails that eventually we responded to and that's when we realized that it was a pretty crazy thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you guys put together a song you know i don't want to get it, you can get really tedious about how songs are made by different bands and you know, who writes the lyrics first and all this stuff. But I feel like, I feel like the way that your songs are put together, that you guys, I picture you guys in a room just jamming out riffs and kind of finding grooves then like, okay, this groove sounds good. This riff sounds good. Let's write lyrics for it. Is that kind of close to how it happens? No, actually not. We, we, like, like we said, we just, we bring the, we bring the songs and, and there is, there, I, I think me and Nick both just, record demos and you know kind of figure it out either by ourselves or something like that and then we we bring it in and we show it and then everyone kind of knows how to go with it it's not a lot of like like we do it together in a room so my garage band fantasy just isn't true well some, some <laughs> it depends on the song like there's some songs that you know we'll have demos for and they're just like done um, but there's some stuff where it's like, I'll just bring in like an idea and then we really, I feel like this record more than this anything record we did, like, we, me, me and Nick sat down and like got on acoustic guitars and like started going off on some stuff. Yeah. And then we'd like bring it to the band and then the band would like, you know, we would like build it up and then add like a bridge and like riffs and all that stuff. And then normally like my writing process for lyrics is like. I usually just sing nonsense over and over again until like they start to sound like some words and then you write down the words and I did spend a pretty epic amount of time writing um, some of the some of the songs on the album like going pretty like religiously over the song over and over again and writing like 
meticulous lyrics. Um, so yeah, this is the most involved I think we've ever been in the songwriting capacity. Sometimes, like a lot of a lot of the older albums, like the songs are a lot more s- simple. Um, so it was like easier to write them, but this is definitely like an evolution of that. Where did you guys come up with the name Surfers? Like, where is it? Because it's like surfy, like vibes. It's, it's kind of a weird, maybe not that interesting of a story, <laughs> but uh, it's from. In a long story short, it's from like a Brady Bunch episode where the Bradys go surfing and there's a cursed amulet or something. I don't really know. The name the name is stuck. <laughs> we don't know. We don't really I mean, we, uh, made, we made it we made it at the height of like bands like Best Coast and Waves. You know, mm-hmm. that's what we were listening to at the time. So we're like Best Coast. Less, oh my god, and waves. That was like my like Oh my god, my senior year in high school, that was my those were some of my top bands. Oh, same. Oh thing. yeah. How did you find them? How did you guys find new music? I think I remember like just going on. I used to call it gem searching. I would go in to the depths of YouTube. I like that. You know what I'm talking about? How you guys done that? It, my, I mean, my my whole thing just started from going on Pitchfork whenever it was it was, you know, they were they were just doing like a mix of everything just new. And they always had some sort of like ear to like, you know, America. We, whenever we grew up in Vegas, like we didn't have anything to go off of as far as like going to a scene. Like we lived through the internet, you know, like the reason why we found out about Los Angeles, Los Angeles is a, the smell was because they did like a one week only film thing on pitchfork where they would show like a music film like every week and there was one where they did a profile on the smell and i was like this is so cool it's an all ages venue too bad we don't have anything like that here mm-hmm. and i would just watch that like all the time I, like everything like especially for me i did was just live through the internet and just keep searching going through Bandcamp, looking up wow man. Ads for like surf rock bands looking up indie you know and looking up you know anything and just kind of like delving you know deep into that world but um, yeah a lot of in, lot, a lot of a lot of being influenced just you know off of my speakers off my computer when you guys were kids like middle school high school just growing up um was there a scene where you guys are from that you can kind of like say yeah i kind of like was inspired by seeing other bands play or this no kind of no, no. That, that's we thing. went to like ska shows and stuff, but they were really bad. Yeah, you could, you, you could. I, I actually have been telling this story lately, but like I would interview bands like No Age outside of a music venue. I interviewed one of the guys from that band, Health, inside his hotel room, like, <laughs> what used to be the Hard Rock Cafe. Wow. And I just remember absolutely probably punishing these people because I was like this is like my one chance to 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 say what I want to say to them and ask them these great questions I want to impress them but I was like doing it for like my high school newspaper it wasn't even it wasn't even you know yeah going on any sort of blog or anything and, but it's just like that's kind of the the uh the lack of and also just the resentment we had towards our cities that we were living in because we did not have the scene that we wanted like mm-hmm. the, the world was existing without us and we and we were just we wanted to be a part of it like so badly even whenever we went to we moved to reno and we were a part of like that music scene we we kind of we kind of saw what was happening even if there was an all ages space we were kind of like oh the, there's nothing that's like exciting about the music scene like we should just start write songs like we could probably we could probably do this better you know we could probably just like like get people moving if like we started making music because we need it and that's like that's kind of like how we even started you know just needing that 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 live music needing that like you know that fun that we've been lacking like all of our years you mentioned that you had like combed the internet for different sounds and different bands and that you were looking for um, you know, surf, surf rock, surfy bands. 
So was that intentional to make surf curse, regardless of the name sound kind of in that surf kind of in that ventures beach boys kind of thing, but a little bit more obviously updated or did you just kind of stumble across that surf rock sound? Well, we, we've always thought that we didn't really have a surf rock sound um, and joke that like, it, you know, everyone has been like, you know, it's like punk curse. It's like, punk yeah, curse. like if we were like called Rockers. the, the delinquents or something, I don't fucking know. Uh, like, <laughs> it's so very like, yeah, I mean, no I, one I, would I be like, like this, it was very this surfy, beachy duo, like, um, we just wear Hawaiian kind of shirts and perform. Yeah. It's kind of like the curse that we have now. So that's the joke. It's it, like I the mean, curse. Is, the thing is, is like, it, it that was, it, we were doing, we were doing like a surf thing for like the first year of our existence. And then we kind of like moved out of it pretty fast. But like the only way that we can like, that we were ever playing shows or, you know, being associated into some sort of scene was always like getting st- you know locked in with other people who like were making yeah like surf sort of stuff or or garage rock or like whatever and it's like for years we've been trying to like you know be like that's cool but it's just not really like our thing anymore it would be nice to just you know we we always try to uh delve into whatever we're honing in on like around us in some sort of way or be inspired by like more older and, and uh, modern bands that are, are very interesting. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's some songs that are like, like I was going through, you obviously listen to, to your catalog to some of your um, newer and older stuff last night. And, and um, like the song nostalgia specifically sounds like a Brian Wilson composition. The vocals sound very beach boysy. So oh, interesting. It's kind of a, yeah. So I was thinking there was kind of a, ki- a chicken and egg situation where like, oh, we're so, so we should kind of, I don't know. Yeah. So Nick, how do we, I, I really want to know you have these two projects. How do we balance kind of like the energy between the two? And also how do we know what song or what project? Like if you write a song alone, which one are you going to, are you going to have it for current joys or surf curse? How do you, how do you distinguish? Um, well, I would say, I mean, like, it makes sense to me. I don't know if it would make sense to anybody else. Um, there have definitely been times where I've, like, brought in songs to Jacob, and he's like, that's the Current Joy song. Or, like, mm-hmm. even songs on this new record where he's like, that should just be a Current Joy song. Or, like, it kind of just, I don't know. Jacob, you, you kind of know. Yeah, there's just like that, like you kind of get the vibe where you're yeah, like there's this there's is there's, not there's like a I think there's like a voice and a signature with like the surf curse stuff, um, and then there's just the absolute voice of 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 Nick. Like whenever Nick brings a song that I'm like, oh, this is like a current joy song. Like it it has like you know it has like this this kind of intimacy mm. that is from nick like it's a, it's, it's a little yeah. too yeah. personal because like a lot of the surf stuff is kind of <laughs> when like, it's too personal yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's very it's very much like you can hear it like whenever it, especially because i'm a big fan of nick like i i love his music and i'm you know i always get proud of him like i've i've been like on long rides where i'll i'll put on like old you know nick the old demos of nick's like back in the day Aww. and like and i and like you know you kind of like it's just like i got a good sense of like what or in my opinion at least like what is what is him you know and i can always hear that being on the next you know the next record it's always like and it, of course it's always like a hit <laughs> like it's always like <laughs> oh yeah it's like it's a great song it just doesn't like it just doesn't like you know, sometimes like, it's just like, yeah, this isn't this is this is like this is like a total you thing, you know. There was a new there was a song that was gonna be on this record, on this new Surf Curse record, and the whole band, because there you know, two of our members is also 
two of Nick's members in the in the Kern Joy's live band. And they were they were even like, I think this is a Nick song. You know, I think this is like a Kern Joy song. Yeah. And it just kind it's of like, Huh? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, yeah, I think yeah, it's hard to describe, but uh I think I think Jacob kinda nailed it. It's like two different voices, you know. Like Surf Curse has such a you un- like unique voice from Current Joys and That's vice so versa. Weird. I actually, when I heard Surf Curse, I did not know it was you. I didn't know. And I, I, I've i been a current Joy fan for like a minute now. So isn't that crazy? I, I didn't know. I didn't know. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I had a note. I was trying to like, what? how would I describe this? Like I, 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 I wrote down that I felt like current Joy songs were a little bit more acidic is the word, which is a very like, very like, music writer terminology to use but that's i don't know there's like a different bite to it or something i don't know that's interesting i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to that one yeah more acidic (laughs) more acidic (laughs) you did the uh the uh remix of freaks with travis barker and travis barker is playing drums on everyone's albums yeah everyone's songs these days yeah, I think we've had half a dozen guests who have had Travis Barker uh, appearances. How did that get get put together, and why did you do it? Um, we were trying. Sorry, I'm like, I'm like, it's about, okay. <laughs> I'm like about to play a show, and I'm just looking at everybody who is coming. Wow, it's- <laughs> that's exciting. Nick, Nick, Nick is in Berlin, and it's. I guess what, like at least six or seven or something over there. Seven thirty, and I have this little, I have this little window that actually looks into the venue, and everyone appears to just be sitting down. Interesting. (laughs) On the ground. (laughs) On the ground, yeah. Oh my god. I'm also trying to get like, I'm trying to like find the best lighting for me, you know. Well, we're just doing this audio, audio, so you don't have to yeah, do any yeah. live. Oh, this is just, just audio. audio. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, because Jacob isn't even on that. The light, the light keeps changing, and I'm like trying to adjust. No, you're like, good. Where, wherever, you, wherever you got the feed, so the well, it's, just for, it's just for me personally, you know. Okay, I want, you just you just like to I'm looking at myself well, right, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, the Travis Barker thing happened um, because we were trying to get remixes of freaks or the label wanted to do like a freaks remix ep um and uh he was one of the people who said yes and it's awesome because you know blink 182 is probably my favorite band of all time and i memorized enema of the state and can sing it forwards and backwards and yeah just uh just a cool like label hookup i guess yeah we never met the guy. Oh, but you never met him. So you just said, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just, he just kind of did, he kind of just did his own thing. He just like recorded drums and just kind of his own, you know, interpretation. And we're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Did you like how the remix came out? Yeah. I thought it was sick. I actually thought like something that he did to it was, was maybe something we should try live, but maybe we, shouldn't because then it's just his version what is the thing that you thought was cool he does like after the like i am just a freak he like does like a breakdown instead of like just going into like do 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 it's like do 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 um yeah i don't know if that makes sense i like the impersonation though it's like i am just a oh it's like a halftime thing it's like a halftime thing, yeah. Wow. If you were to meet him in person, what do you expect he'd be like? Like, I mean, he's like in the Kardashian family now. There's a lot, you know, he's like, he went, he really did go from Blink 182 to like some Hollywood. Oh, he's like, thing. he's like on a whole nother tip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what do you think about that? It would probably be chill. He seems like a chill guy. Maybe yeah. that'll be you guys one day too. Just switch up, go from punk. Yeah, to you know. There'll be some Kardashian out there for you, Nick. Yeah. There's a few. There's a few. <laughs> there's a few Kardashians. There's a few Kardashians. There's enough to go around yeah. this whole podcast. There's there's plenty of, of famous people that can we can latch on to and make us more famous. So you talked a little bit about <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should use the next. Yeah. 
That's what I'm saying. Are you, are you guys, um, do you guys like doing the party network, like go to the party to meet this person kind of thing, like hook that up kind of, are you, do you Dude, guys we enjoy don't, that we don't aspect get invited of to any parties? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're like still on the outskirts. We're still I, the underdogs. Yeah. That's we're what like we love about you, your underdogs. Too. I mean, I like it like that. I think people yeah. just assume like, my friend Kim the other day, she's a really big designer, um, Kim Shuey. And she was like, I don't know why my friends, you know, like, she's like, where are all my friends? I'm like, Kim, everyone thinks you're the busiest person in the world. That's why. <laughs> she's literally dressing Lizzo, like, on the daily basis. I'm like, Kim, mm -hmm. people just need to think about you guys. Like, you guys are, like, chilling with Travis Barker on a Wednesday morning. You know what I'm saying? That's how probably people see Travis it. Barker on Wednesday, all... break on Thursday. Well, like, you, you know what they to. say. It's it's lonely at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that? Are you guys feeling that like now with the like success? Like, are you guys? How does that taking a toll on like your mental? No, it's great. I think I think we've uh, you know we've done this for so long, and we've kind of had like a slow progression of success. Anyways, like um, over the years, you know, like we did this band for years without making any money, and then it sort of started to become a career for us. And then now it's like on a whole different level of like, we're just really busy now, or it feels like I, I feel very busy. busy. I'm busy <laughs> as shit because of the two bands. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's, yeah, that's like the biggest thing that, that's changed is we just have more work to do, you know? Um, I'd, yeah. I'd like to think that our egos are in check, but maybe maybe that's not for us to say. <laughs> <laughs> before we uh, before we end this, guys, you know, you mentioned that the creation of the music is different now, just because you have more resources and stuff. But how, when you put out this album, whatever it ends up being, what will the sound be like compared to other uh, surf Cor surf curse albums? I, I think it's gonna be a I think it's gonna be a really great rock record. Like and I, I, I mean and I mean it in a sense where it's I think it's gonna be something that people are gonna, you know, pick up on and think it's gonna be a little different and exciting. Like in a way that's like, oh shit, this is like what these guys are doing now. And I think people can respect it and then also at the same time be just as in love with it as maybe some of our other songs in the past like i don't know i think we're all excited about the record like it feels like we did make a nirvana record or like Pixies <laughs> record you know that's like it's like okay i can see this standing the test of time Wow. Wow. That's a big, that's, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I, you sold me. Yeah. That was a good pitch. That was a good pitch. Oh, good. <laughs> Are there any themes of the record that we can expect? Like, so it's not surf at all. It's not surf at all. Oh, okay. I don't know if there's any that's surf. A good, that's song a hint. Though. That's a good hint. Um, would you say there's any surf songs on there's, it, Jacob? There's, it, it has, it definitely has like some fast paced tempos on there okay. there's, there's there kind of like, i would say yeah there definitely are like like there's a lot of our sound on it um but there's also a lot of like of like the bands that we love like a lot of like rock and roll bands that we love um we got a lot of influence from you know like every time a family member on at like thanksgiving or something or like anyone asks me if what i what do, I do they're like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a musician. And they're like, what kind of music do you make? And I just say, rock and roll music. And <laughs> I just, That's the only way they'll understand. It's yeah, just like the amazing. easiest thing to say. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with this record, that uh, makes the most sense because it is truly like, a, it's like a rock and roll record. Like there's so many influences from like 70s rock and roll and 90s rock and like, um and it's kind of just like a collage of all those things that we love as well as like very us you know very much like sounds like the four of us in a room 
uh, in locked in a room of love or whatever. A room <laughs> of love. <laughs> you should name the album that, A Room of Love. That's or pretty good. The whole it's thing locked in a room good. of love. <laughs> locked in a room of love. <laughs> That's fire. All right, guys, we got to let you go. I We appreciate the the uh, via Germany, via LA interview. Yeah. This and is Nick, awesome. I hope you find the stage. It feels, it looks like you're like searching, you're like an maze in a horror movie trying to find I know, it it's, out. It's, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just getting <laughs> restless because I'm in like a tiny room. <laughs> so I started pacing a little bit. Normally when I'm on my phone calls, I'm pacing, but no one can see it because I'm not yeah, on video, but now once you guys told me that this wasn't being uh, <laughs> broadcast on video, I just started pacing and moving around a lot. So that is true. Yeah, you have been doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's fun though. I enjoy it. I'm I'm digging it. This is That's the past thing to ask I'm a, I'm a We've all wanted to see. Yeah. Um, well, thank you guys yeah, for yeah, the thank interview. Thank you guys so much. Really, Absolutely. Really appreciate this. It was very nice talking and meeting you. Absolutely. And Come good to luck New York. With, good luck with your album. We definitely will. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time, Nick. We'll see you next time. We'll see bye you, Jacob. Bye. <laughs> see you next time. Bye, bye guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Woo. That was fun. It was also, it was fun to get like, it was because we'd had current joy. We had Nick on as current joy before. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jacob, this extra element. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like having a return guest, but not really. I know. I was going to say um, when, when they were saying goodbye, I was like, we'll see you for your third project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but no, I think, yeah, that's really cool. And like I said, I think Jordan, when we were trying to book surf curse, I didn't even know, like, again, did not know it was a Nick project. And I think you were like Demi, you know, oh, like yeah, I think yeah, I about a week ago. Do like, you remember that? Yeah. You were like, Demi, you like, Demi, you just had Nick on. I'm like, what do you mean? But no, this is Surfer. She's like, no, but that's Nick. And I'm like, oh. It's funny oh, that God. you're that you were friend that you were friends, that you were fans of both bit bands. I know. And then didn't know. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. I guess that is like a good a testament to the variety of the music, you know, on Nick's end. That that's true. Yeah. And it's so cool, like for a band. For a group like Surf Curse, like I'm seeing like everyone from like your typical like indie lover to OnlyFans girls posting, you know, on their Instagram freaks or like a Surf Curse tune. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so cool to see like when like an indie act like breaks through. It's like a phenomenon. It's like we love that. You know, you're making it when the OnlyFans girls embrace you. That is. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, that'll do it for us. Woo! Of course, go to popdust.com for all the previous episodes, YouTube, Facebook, watch, and clips on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, all the major platforms, Apple Music and Spotify, etc. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.